What's up everybody? One coach's opinion. And remember it's my opinion, not just a fact. And let me say this, sometimes I put stuff out here um, and give my opinion just to get opinion from other people that might change my opinion or maybe sharpen my opinion up or make me think maybe my opinion wasn't good in the first place. So it, this ain't about just me splurring out. I, I kind of look forward to the comments some people make. I mean, I know some people just are here to, with the buffoonery, but a lot of times I read the comments and see what people are saying, the, the ones that make sense. And, you know, I might dig a little further into my investigation of whatever we're talking about. And, you know, you might kind of change my mind. So, I mean, don't think when I make these videos that they're just, uh, Oh yeah, this is where I see it. This is how it goes. It's not like that. So, with that being said, I want to talk about uh, the setup punch. So, uh, in my opinion, usually setup punches don't land. Now, I've had some debates with people. Some people say, yeah, they do. But like I said, if if you're landing a jab and you're snapping a guy's head back, wow, on your jab, on your jab. I mean, you could say, well, that's setting up my one too, but really to be honest, I mean, if the jab is snapping his head back, <laughs> the jab isn't really a setup punch. The jab is punches landing. I mean, you could add the other punches or you might have the time to catch his head coming back. But if your jab is actually snapping the guy's head back, I would just keep jabbing until he figures it out. Once he figures it out, then your next punch can make the jab the setup punch. So. Whatever he does, it makes you throw the other punch is would be considered a setup punch to me. Because now you're making a miss, but what did he do? Like if you're landing your jab cleanly, cleanly, and finally this guy starts making you miss your jab, what did he do? And then you just make the next move like if he was playing chess. So this is what gets me. So if you say every time, like, okay, say you're fighting or spawn, whatever. And you come back and you say, every time I throw my cross, he does this. Every time I do this, he does this. Or well, every time. The fact that you're saying every time you do something gets the same reaction from this guy or girl, depending on who's, you know, that's your setup punch. If every time you throw a hook, you make a dude roll under it, that's your setup punch. Now, what do you do after? You could, you could you could bait the hook. I mean, make miss the hook and then land land across or or land a, uh, the opposite hook, whatever you might call it. Or, you know, you bait the left hook and land the right hook because now he's rolling. When he pops up, you're just gonna catch him with the right. But that becomes your setup punch. Anytime you do something, and you could use the word every time. Like if you shuffled your feet and you say every time I shuffle my feet, the guy goes like this. Then shuffling your feet is the setup. You gotta build off that. If, if you can make somebody do something every time, then you have your setup punch. You just gotta know how to build or come come behind that punch or, or come behind in, uh, the setup or come in front of it. Sometimes, so for instance, uh, say you throwing a one-two and you say, well, every time I throw my one-two, the guy blocks like that. I do it again, he blocks like that. Your one two is not landing, but he blocks with no counter, or no attempt to counter. He just shells up. Your one two becomes your setup punch because you can control him. Now what you do after or before, so now every now and then, you just jab and he still goes like that because he's waiting on the cross. So now your, your whole goal now is if I can get him to stop waiting on the cross, my, my one two is gonna land now. If I can get him to throw one two and just do this without any now, now if you're throwing a one two and a guy's throwing a counter shot back, I mean you can figure out what his counter's gonna be. If it's like he throws only one counter, you should be able to figure that out too. But these are your setup punches. Anytime you can make a guy, like you say, every time I slip down right here, the guy starts defending his body. Then you build off of that. Because now you've discovered something that you have control of. And some people don't kind of understand that. So if say you go to jab a guy, you're, you're a southpaw, you're fighting a, 
conventional fighter. You go to jab a guy, and he counters with his jab. Like, every time you jab him, he knocks your jab down, comes over top with your jab. Depending on what type of fighter you are and your skill level, this actually puts you in control. Because now you can slip his counter. You know what I'm saying? You can use your feints. Because you got him looking for something that he figures is winning. Now you have to take your, your move, like in chess, and say, okay, yeah, that's not going to work. Same way when you play chess. If you've ever played chess, you, you should be able to put that over into boxing. Because when it comes to chess, everybody knows before you sit there and strike or take a piece off the board, you better look for the consequences of your actions. That's what makes chess such a beautiful game. Because somebody could have set you up four moves ago with the piece so as soon as he takes this I got it backed up with this I got it backed up with this I got it backed up with this if he takes here I'm gonna take here if he takes here and usually the person that makes the last move and the last down to move is gonna benefit off that so if, if we say okay let's go with the changes you're gonna look and say you know out of this move right here I'm gonna end up with five pieces and he's gonna end up with three and that might be a good move depending on the pieces you know what I'm saying? But you at least want to be a challenge. Before you can take that piece, you want to look around and see how that piece is protected. So you're going to the next step. Or he is. Yeah, I'm going to put this pawn out here. And if he takes the pawn, I'm going to, I'm going to use that to take to make my bishop take this or whatever it is. Same way. If I put the jab out here and he counters with the jab, then I'm going to slip and I'm going to throw my hook. If he counters with the jab, then I might jab, block with this hand, and come back with my jab. But bottom line is, you're still controlling the situation because every time you jab, he tries to counter your jab. So if you can use the phrase every time with whatever you're doing, you're in control. If you say every time I roll, he jumps back, you're in control. Now, if every time you roll, he does something different, and gives you a different move, then you're not in control. I, I'll give you that. But if you can say, well, every, man, every time I roll back or squat it, he jumped back. Unless it's like a foul. If you say, like, well, every time I, I roll, he just fell in on my back. And then, yeah, ain't nothing you can do about that. I mean, you ain't gonna have no control except for maybe to get him disqualified or something like that. But situation like that, no. But if it's a punch, or if you say, every, every time I throw my cross, he tries to counter with this uppercut. Okay, now... Give him, the, give him the uppercut and you make a move on the uppercut and you counter behind the uppercut. You're still in control. Anytime you can use the word every time with anything you're doing in boxing, you're in control. You just gotta know what to do. Now, if you say every time I throw my jab, he counters me with a hook and it lands and, and you stop it right there or you say, well, I just stopped jabbing, then he wins. He took, it, he took your jab from you. Because now he has you saying, I ain't jabbing no more. Because he's throwing that hook. Instead of you saying, okay, if he every time I jab, he keeps counting me with the hook. Guess what? I'm going to jab and I'm going to roll after that. And then I'm going to land a body shot. Now that puts you back in control. Now if he says, okay, every time he jabs, I throw my hook. And he's rolling trying to, I throw my hook. Now I dip down, catch his body shot, and now I come over. Whoever can go deeper in their game that's when you get more of a complete fighter. And I tell you some fighters now, Floyd was a good fighter like that, that he had the answer to your answer. Um, Shakur Stevenson, that he'll be hard to beat like that he has, if he has the answer to your answer. You know what I'm saying? And that's all really set up punching is, having the answer to their answer. But guess what? You, you have to let them answer before it becomes a setup punch. A counter punch is a punch that is landed after you let somebody else throw a punch. That's why it's called a counter punch. But if you're beating them to the punch or stopping them from punching, then you're cutting off your countering ability. Now you're just trying to beat them to the punch. You know what I'm saying? So say if I throw a one, two, I'm trying to beat somebody to the punch. If I see, okay, you're trying to punch in between, I throw a jab, slip, cross, which are the same punches coming at a different timing. Now I'm trying to counter his punch. Now I see what he's doing. He might, when I when I throw one, two, he might seal up. 
There's this thing. So when I go, ah, ah, he seals up. Bop, pop, then releases. He seals up, then releases. So now this time I throw a jab. I don't throw the cross. I step over. He releases, boom. And now the cross might hit him because I changed up the timing of it. But, I mean, you know, I'm sure your coach will be the same thing. But coaches, fighters, whoever, I mean, I guess it's, do setup punches land? Because if you start to me, if you're landing punches, not setup punches, they're landed punches. You know, if, if you're actually landing a hook, ah, every time you throw your hook, ah, you throw your hook ah, I'm not going to say, well, use the hook and set up this. I'll be like, Joe, just keep throwing the hook. He can't, if he can't block the hook, then he don't have an answer for your answer. Or he don't have an answer for your question. Let's say it like that. If you're leading the way, you're presenting a question which you're looking for an answer for. Then you want to answer to his answer. If he don't have an answer to your answer, you know what I'm saying? But somebody got to pose a question. And posing a question is what you consider the setup punch. The setup punch, in my version. Now, if you feel you can set up a punch by, like if I land a, a right to the body and it drops a dude, nothing's coming after it. There was no setup to it. But if I, if I go to throw body shots and I can make him drop his elbow and then I look down and his elbows drop and I just come up top, then that body shot is my setup punch. Like, body head. The body shot is a setup punch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to throw it. If you land in the body shot and come back with a head shot, I mean, if you land the body shot, normally that, and that's crumpling them, the head shot is just a finishing punch. But body head, three piece, if you throw it a three piece, the one, two sets up the hook. If you if you continue to throw it. Ba pop pop. You know what I'm saying? The first two punches are setting up the third punch. Otherwise, you could just stop on the one, two. If you throw a one, two, and now I stop because we can go on and on. If you throw a one, two, and uh well, if you try to throw a three piece, and every time the dude slip, slip, and then blocks your hook, then you might want to stick with the one, two. If the one two is landing and then you throw the hook and he's blocking the hook, you might just stick with the one two. I'm gonna cut this combination short because I'm benefiting off the first half. I don't need to throw the hook. He's blocking the hook and countering. Now, if you throw a three piece and it's bop, bop, boom, and he's just selling up, bop, bop, boom. Yeah, then next step, body shot, come with the other shot over here, come over here, go to the next program. But if every time you throw it, you get him to go bop, bop, boom, or something like that, you gotta use that. So tell me what y'all think. One coach's opinion. Does a setup punch have to land or does a setup punch miss? In my opinion, the setup is you making them miss. You giving them confident defense. Like, so are you throwing a jab and they slip and they think, oh, he can't hit me with his jab no more. He can't hit me with his jab. So if I'm hitting the dude with a jab, hitting the dude with a jab, that's good. Now I might start throwing my jab a little bit over his shoulder, getting him to slip the way I want him to slip. So I can land the next punch. Then that jab became a setup punch. But before that jab became a setup punch, most likely it was just a good punch. If I'm landing a jab and I knock your head back, knock your head back, knock your head back, I'm gonna keep knocking your head back and moving until you can tell me, stop me from knocking your head back. That's number one. If you can't stop me from knocking your head back on my first jab, we gonna have an easy night. Or, or if you're the fighter, you should have an easy night. If, if you're jabbing and a guy's going, ah, 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 really, and, and you're like, well, now let, let's lay in this. Why? If I'm clearly knocking his head back like this and getting away clean, really, to be honest, if you did that to any fighter that got done that to, that was done to him in a matter of four rounds and didn't answer and couldn't land the jab and the guy just nailed you with a jab, I guarantee you they'd be thinking about stopping your fight because it's unanswered punches. It's clean punches. Now, like I said, if the guy's landing something, landing something compared to your jab, yeah, they're going to let it keep going. But if you land an unanswered jab, most likely somebody's going to say, stop the fight. This is a mismatch. This guy cannot even block the jab. But you might go to another punch and add to that jab, and it's a punch that he's used to. And it might turn the whole fight around. Why? Because you, you might have wanted too much too early. If it's not broke, don't fix it. You know what I'm saying? Everything can use adjustments, but if it's not broke, do not fix it. To me, the setup punch is a punch that you make them going miss. It builds up their defensive confidence, and then you're setting it up with the punch you actually want to land. So to me, a setup punch is a punch 
that you use the word every word. Every time I throw this punch, he does the exact same thing. The exact same thing. That puts you in control. That gives you in control of what's going on. That's a good setup punch in my book. One coach's opinion. Tell me what y'all think, coaches. Tell me what you think, fighters.